Lord forgive me for this trap shit. Sergeant Smack making backflips. Telly hanged it with the action. With the Bible speaking Spanish. Frank Matthews, how I vanished. Poof. Came back like I'm King Tut. Go BBS is on a beamer. When fat cat was tearing queens up. Fall off the profit, not the re up. Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus. Uptown like I'm baby major for the touchdown. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, good afternoon. Thursday, June 7th, 2007, started as an ordinary day at Northside Hospital Women's Center. That hospital is located in North Fulton County in Sandy Springs, and it's known as the Baby Factory of Georgia. Every day, the nurses and doctors at Northside Hospital bring newborns into the world. That's what they do, and that's the business of that hospital. And on that hot, summer, sunny day, there was a young couple there expecting their second child. The woman, her name is Alnice Frazier. Her fiance, his name was Melvin Vernell III. But Melvin Vernell III never met his second child because on that day, he walked to his car, which was parked in the parking deck of the maternity ward in the early evening. And as he sat in the driver's seat of his car, two men approached without saying a word, without uttering a sound. They fired multiple shots into the back of his car. He was struck five times, including a fatal wound, which struck his lungs, and his aorta. And there was absolutely nothing all of those doctors and nurses could do for him at Northside Hospital, and they tried. And on that day, in that maternity ward, his 19 years of life ended before the birth of his second child. The evidence will show this was not a random act of violence. This was not road rage. But Melvin Brunel III was targeted, he was stalked, and he was tracked to that hospital on that day at that time. The person who shot and killed a man outside a local hospital. It happened inside a parking deck outside the labor and delivery wing of Northside Hospital. And as soon as they heard the shot, hospital officials put that building on lockdown. CBS Atlanta's Katie Brace has been following this breaking news all night. Northside Hospital lifted its lockdown. Now, this hospital is known as the Baby Hospital, but tonight, officers were outside its front doors looking into a potential murder. It turned out to be a murder. Officers have since recently cleared the scene, and they say, although the area is safe, they are still looking for the shooter. For two hours, Northside Hospital was on lockdown. Like this, when there's a potential uh, shooting on the, on the campus, we locked down all the hospital facilities. Yo, yo, we back. It's your boy, Pop a Lot. Mob, mob, mob. We on our way to Louisiana with it. Baton Rouge to be exact. Now, I'm going to definitely need all my guys to get in a comment box if y'all are hip to this mob tie shit. 
Now, today we are going to be covering a person that I got hundreds of requests to cover. And you know your boy going to get the streets what they want. Today, we are going to be covering a guy by the name of Melvin Vernell III. But we grown and known to love him as Little Fat, R.I.P. Little Fat. And I'm almost 100% sure that everybody, if not most people, know him from his affiliation with the record label Trill Entertainment, most presumably artists like Boosie and Webby, which his affiliation to them would lead to the smash single Independent. And if anybody was on the scene at that time, they remember just how big that song was, in particular to the ladies. You can go to some clubs now and they throw it on and it still goes stupid. But that's going to be where most people laid their eyes on Little Fat. But what not a lot of people know about him is he had been signed to Trill Entertainment since he was 14 years old. And it would be a year after he was signed to the label when he was 15 when he would guest star on that smash hit. Now, for those not familiar with the situation, a lot of people will wonder, well, how could he end up in position at such a young age? Another thing a lot of people don't know about the situation was his dad, which is Melvin Vernell Jr., was the CEO for Trill Entertainment, along with another gentleman by the name of Marcus Roach. It's not too much known about them two, but I'm almost sure that they had a close affiliation with the late great Pimp C, because if anybody remembers, when Trill Entertainment first broke on to the scene, Pimp C had a lot to do with almost co-signing it, and at one time, I thought he owned it because he was one of the first people to introduce the word trill, if I could remember. But if you was paying attention, you'd notice that close relationship. I even seen interviews with Boosie where he was shouting out Pimp C. But to say Little Fat comes from a family of gangsters would be an understatement because a year before his death in 2011, his father, Melvin Varnell Jr., as well as Marcus Roach would be charged with attempted murder for a shooting that took place on July 4th, 2005 of an up and coming rapper by the name of Bruce B. Lo Moore, who had apparently been bootlegging Trill Entertainment's music. So if anybody knows Baton Rouge, your skin has to have a certain level of toughness just to try to make it. So that kind of shows you a little bit where little fat was probably coming from and with that stardom that he gained at such a young age he would go on to move to Atlanta with his fiance where he would presumably try to take his career to the next level like so many artists do but as the story played out it ended up being more a case of you can take somebody out the hood but you really can't take the hood out of somebody no matter how much success they have because according to court documents, Little Fat had apparently ran off on a large amount of marijuana. And no matter who you are, in a lot of cities, niggas is not playing that shit. And really, with the Little Fat situation, this is where a lot of confusion kind of takes place. Because you'll see places where they say this person was involved and this person was involved. One of the biggest names that would pop up with that would be a guy by the name of Manny Chapaya. Now, this is going to be a guy that ABC7 ran a special on, and he has been featured on Atlanta's News numerous times. ABC7 would name him as an FBI informant, a former Russian mob associate. I've seen some places where they say he might have been a bookkeeper for the Russian mob, but he happened to be in the luxury car business at the same time when Little Fat had moved to Atlanta. And this is where a lot of the confusion takes place because people would say that Manny Chapayev had something to do with Little Fat's murder. The internet would even go as far as to try to link him to Pop Smoke's murder and the theft of a $300,000 Rolls Royce that he was charged with stealing a little bit before his death. I couldn't find no proof or evidence on that. But what was proven was Manny Chapayev had rented an Audi to Little Fat. 
that Audi was equipped with GPS trackers that enabled Manny Chopayev to track the vehicle anytime he wanted. Now it gets a little bit deeper because that Audi had been reported stolen by someone somewhere else because these vehicles were purchased under like a whole straw purchasing scheme, which is a whole nother monetized episode. But in my best effort not to confuse y'all, I don't want to get too off track. So through the series of several confidential informants, authorities will identify a guy by the name of DeAndre Washington, another guy by the name of Maurice Connor, and a well-known rapper by the name of El Dorado Red or Gary Bradford. Now, through the course of some investigation, they was also able to identify a guy by the name of Desensei White, who was real important because what authorities would say that Desensei White was essentially the marijuana supplier. They would try to connect him and El Dorado Red, and they would also connect DeAndre Washington as well as Maurice Connor through a series of traffic stops on the Alabama border going into Atlanta, as well as GPS positioning them at the hospital when Little Fat was killed. At trial, a jury would go on to find the three guilty of the murder for separate charges. Now, DeAndre Washington would be the only one that was sentenced to life, plus 20 years without parole. The other two would be sentenced to conspiracy and participating in criminal street gang activity. So they would have a lot less sentence than DeAndre Washington. As far as Manny Chapayev, his charges would be dropped in this murder case. But that wouldn't be the end for him as he would find himself in more legal trouble in 2020 behind the leasing of these luxury vehicles. And if y'all want to hear more about that, y'all get in the comment box and y'all let me know. But this is definitely a sad tale. I definitely want to say RIP the little fat and really just kind of forces the message to let anybody know that if you got a way out, take it because not a lot of people got those. But y'all know what it is with me, man. Y'all make sure y'all follow me on Instagram, Twitter, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. Y'all hit the red subscribe right under this video so y'all know when this real trill spill shit is dropping. And make sure y'all let me know what cities we haven't been to, what gangsters we haven't covered, what stories we missed. All of that. Mob, mob, mob.